Well, have a look at all this. A viewer of mine, young Mark, here you go, Mark, said, would you like some tools? And I said, I'll have all tools that are being donated. I uh, did not expect this. Uh, believe it or not, that's all solid carbide, including the blank. And come from a mould shop that closed in Victoria. And that is a sad story, another one of our great manufacturers closing down. And they must have done a lot of work to have these tools. Uh, I think these are all drafting cutters, as they are uh, dovetail type cutters. Uh, this one has just been hollow ground on the end, not fully formed. I don't know what sort of die sinking operation it's for, but it's a ripper. Now most of them have either just been reground or have just been made. They are absolutely beautiful. And one thing I really like about these, it gives me an insight how a much more professional shop than what I can do, uh, how they manufacture cutters. So I'll run you through what we got here and then we'll take them down the back and put them up on the table with some good lighting and try and dissect how these were actually ground. I think it'll be an interesting story. Uh, I think there's about 40 of these carbide cutters ranging from very tiny and that's um, more like a counterboard, it's a two diameter cutter uh, and also very very heavy so I say it's a micro-grained or micro-fine carbide. I've had some product like this that was made by Seco many many years ago and you can't grind it with a silicon carbide grain grinding wheel, it's just so damn hard. Uh, yeah another blank, not done, yet I'll be able to repurpose that I'm sure and uh, they've been cut off a little bit rough. Cut off most of the way and then broken. Quite nice cutter. Been repurposed. The end changed again. Comol M42 from Israel. I've had a little bit of Comol product in the past and it's easily as good as the American cutters. Yeah, excellent product. Never been used after being reground. That's been reground a little bit on the rough side. And this will be very interesting to have a close up look at. It's been repurposed for flat bottom drilling, probably through a bush. But I'll bring you up close to show you the grinding on the end. Once you see how it's done by a professional, it just makes it so much easier to do yourself. So I'll wrap it up here, take it all down the back, uh, put some lights on and see if we can't get some close-ups. Back soon. Okay, we'll start off with this dovetail cutter. Uh, like some of the other cutters here, it's got carbide inserts brazed in. Uh, really good job of being induction brazed, I think. But I'll put this one up first, you can see it's had a bit of an injury. Big piece chipped out of one of the teeth there. And that to me would indicate that it's been dropped. It was covered in a bit of sticky tape to try and protect it. Well, that's too bloody late if it's buggered like that. But uh, yeah, quite an interesting bit of manufacturing. So you can see a braze line here. If the light's right, and I hope the autofocus can put up with me moving things around a little bit. Uh, the fit up is perfect, like these guys are just fantastic bloody tool makers, but if you're doing it all your life you'd want it to be fairly good. And on the end you can see a gullet or a skate groove ground in there. Uh, looks like he just used a uh, straight wheel, uh, probably a 6mm wide, 180mm, and then there's a bit of relief in behind it to allow you to cut clearance on the back of the carbide. Uh, the whole cutter has first off been uh, well, circular ground I suppose you'd say with a wheel just into the face to give it a cup shape. That gives you clearance all over the end. So let's look at that product. I'll move it out for another cutter. Now that cutter's not injured. But if you have a close look at it, the carbide teeth protrude above the substrate by about two and a half millimetres. So once again, it gives you clearance in the end. And there's a center in the end. 
and one in the back so I would say it's still on the ground uh, boy that would be a big job to reduce all that chank material but that's quite a nice cutter as well as I said these guys are professionals It's going to be a hard one to get a, a good look at. Right, the gutter thing through there has been done with a flared cup wheel. And that's why you see there's approximately a 45 degree angle in there. So they've gone through with a cup wheel to give you gulleting and then two facets ground behind the tooth. A bit of basic tool making is something I've been practicing and I'm not very good at it so far. But you have to hold the cutter roughly up at that angle so that the flared cup wheel can pass through. When you're grinding tools such as this, you either grind up to a stop, in which case uh, you could have that at virtually any angle. But if you want to pass through, you have to be at the correct angle so the wheel will leave you that kind of surface. So it's either up to a stop or pass through. And I prefer pass through. You, if you go up to a stop and you've got a bit of slop in the table, or anything at all moves you can end up with the wheel engaging quite heavily for the last couple of hours and that has led to a couple of accidents for me rotate it around a bit and there you can see the primary and secondary relief ground onto the back of the cutter once again some good tool room practice there Yeah, I think that'll focus up reasonably well. Yep, that's not too bad. Once again, flared cup well used to put the gullet in, and you can only come out about half the way onto the cutting edge, otherwise, you change the rake angle at the outer edge, which is where all the cutting is being done. Uh, solid carbide, as I said, it's got a two or three degree back taper and these cutters we use for grafting on moulds or for a pinch off if it's a plastic mould uh, I don't know what but I can use them for uh, roughing cutters in cast iron or something like that and when they come to be repurposed I can grind them flat and make them into a D bit or whatever or when they're quite short uh, I might make they're all pretty much the same size I might make up a big boring bar to take them and use them on the horizontal borer Okay, we'll put another one up. Now that particular cutter, get it back in the frame, has been gulleted in there with a uh, saw sharpening wheel, saw gulleting wheel, or similar. And then two very shallow clearance grinds, a primary and a secondary down to the gullet. So you've got to have that gullet to run into or a stop to prevent the cutoff wheel or the uh, grinding wheel, sorry, from damaging the fluid area or damaging itself. Uh, that's quite a hefty cutter. I don't know what the original uh, purpose of it was for. There's a bit of marking on there. It just says something or other number two. I can't understand what it is. And lastly, I'll bring up the tape machine drill. I find this to be a very, very interesting tool. We'll rotate it around and have a couple of looks. Okay, that um, relief at the back of the land, you've got your primary, secondary, and just the body relief. has just been done with a bench grinder wheel or a surface grinder wheel. It's a circular relief just to get the heel away from the job. You can see the primary and the secondary relief and have put a radius on the outside of the edge. I don't know whether that was uh, counter boring for a socket head cap screw or what the heck they were doing. It's an inch and three quarter taper shank drill. Bit of an odd size. I don't know if that marries up with a 20 millimeter or a 16 millimeter cap screw or not. But here's what I find interesting. 
the weight of ground the center yep. uh, once again it could be a straight wheel because it looks like that is at 90 degrees to the face turn it around a bit you can see that they've also reduced the rake by taking away the angle of the flute uh, that could be for a couple of reasons they might be drilling plastic and I always found that a zero rate drill doesn't give you that ragged edge in plastic uh, and it's a much more controlled cut but they've taken that through it through to where it's actually split the point so that would be a reasonably easy job with the wheel traversing through on the grinder with the drill set up at about 45 degrees um, now I'll try and get a better picture of the of the center no, that's a bit hard yes you can see just like some of the uh, slot drills they've grounded material away from both sides and there's a very small V there so if you use that into um, virgin material you'd end up with a pip down the bottom so they could be putting this down into a hole that's had the uh, pilot hole for the shank of the, two, of the fastener already ground out uh, no name on the drill I don't know what the hell it is it looks like fairly hard material and it has ground up quite well so uh, thank you Mark for all the cutters uh, we will be repurposing them all and I thought you'd like to have a look at someone else's work that someone who can do a damn sight better job than me uh, I had a bit of a think as I was bringing the uh, packet with the cutters down here I think it's about 15 kilograms of tooling all up so there's a lot of dollar value involved okay I'll bring you back later on when I'm putting the horizontal borer back on its feet Bye for now. okay here's the outside end of the borer up on the toe jack and um, that toe jack I had in a previous video but if you didn't see it $89 delivered from Viva uh, only used it on this machine so far but it lifts this end of the borer with ease uh, the other end I'll have to slide in behind it and I've got the road skates at that end this is a homemade skate you can see under the end of the bore sort of an oxy cut shape I've got some 8mm plate that the jacking screws come down onto and it saves the concrete getting damaged but also uh, I strip the floor up to get all the crap out to make sure it comes down level now I've got brought a shotgun mic and mounted it to the top of the camera so please let me know if the audio is any better than it used to be so I'll just jack it up a little higher it's supposed to be a five ton jack but I think in tow jack work it would be a fair bit less than that out with that one and I'll do my best to bring it down slow well that was about as easy as you can get quite impressed with the finish on the jack powder coating is all good uh, the foot looks to be fairly heavy in construction so yeah handle comes together quite easily and it's even got a lifting handle good value this is a little skate that I made here a long long time ago it's just solid wheels and some half inch bolts welded onto the bottom of it it's good for the light end but you get more than about 500 kilos on there because there's no bearings in the wheels it just locks up but for all the light stuff it gives me an extra couple of load skates so I've got two plain ones like that and one with the swivel table on top okay we'll drop it down and if we get a chance later on we'll wind the old girl up well this is something I've been waiting a couple of weeks to hear at last in position and working thank God for that and now I can make some chips also can you let me know in the comments what the sound is like with the machine running I don't know how good the microphone is and I do have one of those fairly dumb muffins to put over if you need to ok that's it G'day guys welcome back to In My Shed I'm BC um, this is being made after the main video but I thought I'd better get some excitement up there for you first uh, moved on to regrinding Jim's reamer and I'm having a bit of trouble so I'll zoom you down and show you 
what I'm doing there. Main problem is I've increased the angle of taper and that diminishes the amount of flute available to indicate in and it's a very very old rimmer where I think the flutes were only machined not ground so it's a bit rough for the indexing finger but I'll work outside the square and get the thing going eventually so bring the camera around and zoom you in you can see what I've been doing. Here's a piece of my kit you probably haven't seen before. It's a uh, air fed spindle. Quite a good old unit. I uh, bought it off a bloke who was sharpening cutters for money. We used it for probably a year for annular cutters but we had a lot of lost time. You have to get in the back and loosen a nut to change the angle of the shaft and it was just a pain in the bum so I bought a uh, small work head that's up on the wrong foot at the moment and just ease the job substantially but this is originally designed for fluke grinding now it's got a 5c uh, collet set up and i don't have a lot of 5c collets so i've got a 5c to er32 adapter i find that they're in my opinion a much better chuck now that allows me to move it but uh, i'm having trouble indexing with the finger it catches a lot and if you can't guarantee you're going to get a nice smooth action as the shaft goes backwards and forwards, you don't start bloody grinding, it'll be a disaster. So I'm going to get that away. I made a nice little rounded finger for it. I thought it would have gone well, but when you get towards the front here where the flute diminishes, it starts to ride a bit rough. And back here, the outside of the flute is ground, but right in the gullet, it looks like it's only rough machine, and that's grabbing on the top of the indexer and making it jerk and uh, Mr. Smooth Action. So, I uh, don't know what I'll do. I think I'll try my good old big fat indexer, put it up there, but yeah, we see if we, what we can do. I'll think a little bit more, then I've got to get home, got housework to do. But that's it for now. Please like and subscribe. Um, call out to everybody I'm starting on issue two of the magazine. Uh, if you would like to submit something, just a couple of photos and a bit of a blurb so I can get two A4 pages or even a short one, if you like. Any uh, contribution will be greatly accepted. And uh, put your name up or keep it anonymous, whichever you prefer. So like and subscribe. See you next weekend.